Hi everyone, thank you for joining us tonight. We have Chris, he's our regular <coughs> co-host, and we have Dr. Bird, Milton Bird. Um, basically, I want to mention a few things. Uh, t next week, we'll be having Ed Waller on. Ed Waller was improperly incarcerated for doing nothing and was proven so in court. And um, he will be here to discuss it all, and we'll be doing the full hour on that. Um, okay, I have not dropped the Madison County um, Superior Court judge race. I just have to put it on hold a little bit. I do have somebody giving me the um, background on Gary Gavinas, the DA that, that eventually won the race after they added the other votes. Um, many, many uh, illegal activities at, with proof. Um, it's very hard to prove that the votes were not um, done properly, but we can certainly give you Judge Gavinas's character. Next thing is, when you call in, um, I would like you to limit it to about a minute, uh, and then we'll hang up and we can discuss your call, and um, also take other calls, because we're getting too bogged down with long calls. Uh, also, uh, once again, we're going to be meeting at the Beer Garden um, afterwards for anybody who wants to come. People come um, with information. Um, they can talk to us privately. Uh, we're just like reporters. We don't have to divulge where we heard it. Um, and pe people who want to discuss just general topics of corruption. Corruption is, is the main goal of this show and to bring it out. So coming to that point, uh, let's talk about the county commissioners meeting last night. To say the least, um, the commission was on guard, um, ready to, what's that word? Come on, defensive. They were very defensive before we even walked in the door. Um, Stanley, Bill Stanley was totally outrageous, but the whole deception of um, the money they get and where it came from, what it's for, and Wanda Green took a lot of hits on passing the buck back to her. Poor Wanda, uh, I don't know, um, I haven't just, you know, I have no idea how this is going to turn out, but um, I'm just going to say that I've heard she was a straight shooter and she just was looking down um, and, and taking notes. We'll see. Every, everything's <coughs> open <coughs> to discussion tonight, excuse me. I put in a call to Mandy Stone from DSS today. I'm waiting to hear back from her because she was a, a big speaker last night. Um, Plus, also, I called Wanda Green to because somebody told me that um, when I asked Sheriff Van Duncan uh, why his secretary got a $7,000 raise in hard times, that um, he, he responded with, um, he doesn't do the raises, Wanda Green does them. Um, but then somebody told me that it actually they had bypassed Wanda on this one and gone to one of the commissioners, Holly. And um, I have no idea if that's true or not. Uh, I would hope not. Um, Holly was the, was the one person there last night that, that had a, a decent response to the outrage. So I'm going to open it up. You know the phone numbers. Um, Milton, you were there last night. What'd you think? I think it's quite a stressful event. Um, I think the county commissioners have a challenging position of choices between bureaucratic choices and choices of good civic leadership, which represents a choice with the people. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I think they're being put on the razor's edge by a certain due process of choice, and somebody has to figure out what that's all about. And We're in the process. 
got a bunch of people working on it. Uh, there is a question of investigation. And I do think the people certainly should en enact, if they feel uh, their voice of uh, saying, please investigate it however you think is appropriate. And, uh, we have a phone that's, call. Thank you. Okay. Did you finish that thought? I think for the time being, okay. yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, hello, listener. Hello. Hi, how are you? Well, uh, what was that whole uh, commissioner meeting last night at 8 o'clock? Uh, looked like those people were ready. Uh, looks like they are very scared. And I believe so. so. For your uh, commissioners to act the way that they acted last night is very outrageous. Yes. The people in Buckham County is going to have to get some backbone about their self. It's obvious that these people are raping you all. They're stealing your money. And they're going and doing what they want to do. Exactly. And even to see that sheriff run across that room last night to escort that gentleman out was did you Obviously, see the look I mean, on his already, face? Uh, uh, there was already a deputy over there with him. Yeah, my favorite uh, deputy, Deputy Rice. Um, it was outrageous. The look on his face was like, I'm about to get the guns out. Everybody watch out. He, he, it was unbelievable. I well, think he was what 22. What the commissioners need to do is go back and look at their own video, which I'm sure they did. Today they're probably feeling a lot worse than what they did last night. <laughs> yeah. But they were acting from ignorance. I mean... For these people to be your county commissioners there in that county, I'm out of Tennessee, and I watch where you've made news in Tennessee today. Uh, Asheville, North Carolina made news wow, there good. with your county commissioners meeting last night. And for those people to act that ignorant, you people need to do something. Put their butt out of there. I mean, stand up and for, for your rights. You're, you're the citizen. They work for you. They're not working for nobody but you. That's right. You all I have know. a great day, and, and, and fight these people. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Good night. I think he's right. Um, go Egypt. Um, you know, there's got to be an uprising, um, not a physical one, but a nonviolent one. There has got to be an uprising because, you know what, this show started about Ron Moore. Yes, we, we know about him, and a conclusion will be coming, I think, fairly shortly. Um, I see that he's growing a full face beard and psychologically he's trying to hide. So he's running scared also. But uh, this county commissioner's thing, it takes it to a whole new level. And then we've got a secretary getting a raise of seven grand. Um, it's all over the place. So we need to all pay attention. And um, I can only hope that the public does it, you know. and. Demands explanation demands because there is money and there we are not as broke as they say Because the money's being hidden in all these little uh, big salary things and other projects uh, To be proud that we came in with that slab of cement in front of the courthouse for under 18 million. Holy crow, you know it <laughs> No Hey, Nikki. Hey Hey, uh, listen, I, I was watching that, that meeting earlier, too, and I was just kind of wondering, you know, what their options on having them arrested? I mean, to them just admitting, you know, that they had been taking all that money and ignoring all that extra, I mean, that is, every other month they're on there apologizing for something. There's somewhere they have bound to have broken the law, and what's, uh, what's holding somebody up from getting them arrested? Can we do the same thing that they did in Vallejo, California? And I'll direct that to the former uh, Fletcher man there. Okay, tell the me other. about tell me about California. Well, I mean, they just had the whole uh, council arrested less than a month ago, and then last night on the news it looked like there was a different one where they had the whole commissioner board arrested because they were misappropriating the money. Somewhere there's some guilt there. These people have been in charge of their dynastical monarchy long enough up here, and they just need to be arrested. I mean, I'm willing to sign on the paper. I don't know how much it costs or nothing, but... I mean, that man just called from Tennessee and said we need to do something. That's what we need to do. Just That's have right. Rest. That's right. Now, I, I certainly will not be the first one to go to the FBI and say look into this. The FBI is, um, well, they've proven themselves useless. So I don't know who would arrest them because it's all one big circle. 
Well, that, I mean, all it takes is one citizen going down there filling out a charge, ain't it? That's what I'm asking you. How about Chris? Did you know anything about that Vallejo deal there? I mean, you seem to be well studied. I've I've heard a little bit about it, but not not much. Uh, my primary focus in California was what went on in. I think it was uh, Bell, California, when the entire county commission this past summer was was taken down for misappropriating funds and giving each other nine hundred thousand dollar a year sal salaries. But uh, as for Vallejo, I, I, I'm honestly not sure. I've been kind of out of the loop over the past couple of weeks dealing with personal issues, right. so I, I'm, I'm not sure what all has been going on in the world except for what I've seen in in the Middle East lately. I'm just wondering if, if someone, uh, you know, I'm kind of. Incapacitated to do much running, but folks, it's downtown a lot. I'm just wondering, you know, is there any way to call Vallejo, California, or somebody out there and see what they actually did if it was just one citizen? I think the FBI, that, that's way too much dramatic. This is just a regular citizen. I don't a think. Paying citizen. If, if, I don't if, think the FBI is too dramatic because when we discuss this, we'll be discussing every county. Well, they'll come the in looking at it anyway, but it's going to take one of us going down there and filling out the paper and having them arrested. And do they have to accept the charge or not accept it? I don't there, know. There, there, ha there, there has to be a legitimate them. charge to it. There has to, be, um, there has to be a legal claim, as far as I know. And if there is... If there is an actual claim of them breaking a the law, then an investigation has to ensue. Uh, you could even go and make a verbal motion in court. You can make an accusation in court, and it's up to the judge. The judge and the district attorney are bound to investigate that claim. Don't well, forget the magistrate. The magistrate, the exactly. They shackled that other bunch up. They was in handcuffs and stuff. They wasn't just walking down through there in pursuit saying, yeah, we've done something bad. They had them in shackles. Okay, we'll look into this so, because that's right. an interesting Thank idea. You. Thank you. Thanks Bye. Thanks for the call. Yeah, now, how do you prove misappropriation of funds? How did they do that? We'll have to look into that. Well, I'm, I, I'm not an attorney, and I think the attorneys would more or less, um, by nature, go along with the program here. If, could I interject? Sure, you can. Um, having been an elected official in the past, there is this pattern of bureaucratic process and that includes investigations within uh, the system, we'll refer to it as that, in, local, in government, local government. Uh, the boundaries of how a manager, a bureaucrat, an elected official who is functioning as a bureaucrat, they have those guidelines to work with and the system to investigate it should, is in place. As, as that can be triggered by going to the magistrate. Uh, as a public request. Uh, law enforcement officers have to do that. So as a private citizen, you can do that. Uh, you can go and say what? Well, you have the right of discussing it with a magistrate and asking the pertaining laws to this situation, and they'll give you an opinion. The magistrate's not a judge. Ah, mm -hmm. but he's part of the staging of the due process of uh, what I call record-keeping, um, appropriate response within the judicial system to look at the legislative system. You've got okay, but and the judges are magistrates. But and a magistrate can also sign off on a warrant giving probable cause to actually arrest someone. Well said, Chris. So, what we're talking here about is the action of citizen rights to make a decision when is a bureaucratic decision-making process out of bounds. Uh, the patterns sociologically we're seeing all across the country of decades of uh, what I call bureaucratic misdirection. Today we need actual leadership of the people, for the people, with the people, to start making that voice be heard of leadership. And by the people, and that means we have to stand up and have our voices heard. I had thought of starting a group called We the People and letting somebody else run it because I'm really up to my nose. And, um, but then um, Mike Fryer said, we don't need another group, we just need people to join into the groups that we already have. There was a lady, Mrs. Bennett, Citizens for Change. I don't know how to get a hold of her. Um, she was very interesting when she spoke last night. So we do need to take action, we need to, uh, but there'll be lots of discussions. Um, 
and there will be places like the beer garden tonight or um, other people congregating that I hope I hear about so I can can go join in because this is our pocketbook. This is our friends, our commissioners that we voted in to protect us. They are, they're just like Congress. They vote themselves raises and we're all mad at them because they get perks we don't get. We have a caller. Hello. Good. I'm sorry. Uh, it's me again. I just looked it up. In the state of North Carolina, your magistrates are considered judges. Okay. So okay. they are considered judges in the state of North Carolina. I just looked it up on your uh, website there. Also, uh, I, I agree. Uh, I think you all can go and uh, with enough people can get a warrant for each one of those if you have proof that these people have committed larceny which I'm considering, and I, well, the way I saw everything, that they are committing larceny by uh, the way of a pen, like some lady said last night on the show. That was uh, me. Well, anyway, they, they are, and uh, I think that uh, that you have uh, every every right to do this as a citizen of Buckingham County there, and stand up, people. Get okay. The back off. The proof is the problem. Um, I'm, I'm not an expert. Well, it's uh, actually the it, is they're, they're admitting to what they have spent. They are admitting to what they have done. I mean, it, it, it all came out in the meeting, the biggest part of it. They have admitted of taking this money from you all uh, and doing all this stuff. It, 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 they, they told on themselves. When and, they and took they were the out of order all night last night. Yes, that board was completely out of order. And then for them to leave a gentleman out that was that did nothing that I saw but was ready to make a public comment but outrageous. Yeah, David so, Gant was good luck with you all over there and uh, give them hell. Thank you. Um, a proof would be also that they took the 30% pay cut because they realized it was unreasonable, right? I don't know if we could classify that as proof, but it could be it, it could be something that goes on to a long list of things worth investigating. And ultimately, if a concern was raised, it would be up to the proper authorities to do an investigation into it. And those proper authorities, whether or not they, they do their job, uh, we've seen them do their job and we've seen them kind of uh, ignore things at times, but we would hope that they would, hope that they would do the right thing in the case. But uh, a complaint needs to be raised. A complaint needs to officially be raised. And whether would you that help means me word the complaint? Well, I'm no lawyer, but um, uh, well, my, 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 my grammatical skills are, are second to none, so I'll see what I can do. Okay. <laughs> um, and if anybody else wants to volunteer for this job, I'll be glad to accompany them and video it. Okay, I was going to say, oh, yes, the, the budget, the, the, the financial doings, of the county are actually encrypted. It would take a forensic um, accountant to be able to decipher it. We have money invested in stocks and I'm wondering, I heard that we have money in foreign banks. Now, uh, I want to know what's going on. But um, I'm the one with the, the, the title of an idea, and you guys are the smart ones who are supposed to follow through and tell me what to do. <laughs> I just take corruption and, and uh, go Egypt. Anybody mm. have anything to add? You know I do. Well, go ahead. Well, I've talked to a number of my friends about what I call the sociological madness we've got going on and our society of our destabilizing economy. I mean, it's driving us all crazy figuring out how to deal with it because nobody's in the position where they really want to be. Um, we have the need to change things to be sustainable, yet we really are not having the freedom to create it yet. True. And that adds to that discord of being in our society instead of being stabilizing. And ironically, the industry of economics that I've been talking about, that I'm involved in, 
is one of those tools that can be hugely stabilizing to, uh, to local economy across the country, even globally, if you want to be truthful about it, the, uh, the hemp and the cannabis medical use. If the people are not given tools, be it such as that or other things, to get their lives stable, this uh, economy is going to head somewhere else that we don't want. But we, to be very clear, we're not talking about getting high. No, I'm in talking... any sense of the word. Well, you gave the example of your friend. If, the, if your friend was in the stage of dying, would it be a medication of comfort? Would, you know, and they'd very much be there. Uh, and the answer to your question is yes, they would be there in a way that would probably be the most balanced they could be metabolically for that moment. Uh -huh. uh, it's one of the ironies about understanding this cannabis therapy. Uh, cannabis therapy is a fascinating thing, but we've got this process of trying to move our society forward, not only uh, bureaucratically, but we've got sociological maturity going on. We've got this information changing us so fast. We call it the internet. Uh, I, you know, I've just now discovered how to use Twitter, uh, uh, but it's because this social networking is creating a social mindset change, and I call it the process of maturity. If you want to call it anything else, let's talk about it. Uh, but the things, those changes are going on with all these economic as well as climate issues. It's a madness of. Cultural imbalance is going on all over the place, and we see this domino effect of economy uh, that's impacting us all. At some point, we're going to have our Egyptian events, and proud to say they're there, but other ones will crop up too, such as uh, the rage and the anger and the hostility. Social revolution is fracturing right now around the world in many ways. Well, we, we can only ask ourselves to Yes, we're, we're angry about it, but put our effort into um, being Egyptian um, and not getting violent. Uh, that only makes us look like we have no words um, that are wise enough to speak. We have to resort to something violent. It's not good for your insides anyway. It, it, do something positive. Um, it's not worth it to hate and... Well, how do we get our society to start empowering itself by choice? We the people, That's, if you just keep saying, we the people. And it goes, it falls on deaf ears. The more you say it, the less effect that it has, from my experience. And I by no means have an answer to the question, however, it is a very good one, and one that I've asked myself many, many times. But. If you look at the look at the, the Mediterranean Rim, we will look at southern France, the immigration issues that have led to massive protests there over the past several years. We look at economic factors in Portugal and Spain. We look at southern Italy. We, we look at Athens, Greece, which just uh, had a call of half a million people to riot and demand citizenship there because they're there illegally, but they think because they live there, they should have the exact same birth rights as anybody else. Well, that protest fell through, but nevertheless, there's a sentiment for it. And we saw the protests that were going on in Athens by the so-called anarchists last year. We've seen the protests going on in Algeria. We saw what happened in Tunisia. We've most recently seen what's happened in Egypt. And now it's currently going on in Syria and Libya as we speak. I Iran, I heard, also. And Iran as well. Uh, the security forces there cracked down on them before they could really get going. But we'll see if uh, they decide to to kick it up once more. But the common thing, the common factor amongst all of these locales is there is extreme hardship in all of them. Even the developed countries such as France and Portugal and Spain and Greece, in those, in those communities where the protests are, are, are popping off, there is extreme hardship there, whether it be a massive economic calamity that befell Greece from hosting the Olympics there, hundreds of billions of dollars, trillions of dollars in debt, no hope for the future at all. There's always going to be a mitigating factor. In Tunisia and Egypt, it was corruption as well as, as rising food prices across the board. The staples that keep people healthy and happy are no longer affordable to them. So this, this makes people mad. And this led to December, the second week of December, the uh, produce stand vendor in Tunisia setting himself ablaze in the act of self-immolation and protest oh to government agents confiscating his ability to make a living. So there's always a mitigating factor. There's, there's always there's always a Why catalyst. Woman 
There's always something there that makes people stand up and realize that enough is enough and they're not going to take it anymore. So far in this country, we've not been there. We've been close. We've been pushed to the brink a couple of times. Look back at the Vietnam War protests, especially what happened at Kent State. We have been pushed to the brink a couple of times, but we've never quite made that step to say that this is it. The, the democratic process is failing us in these areas, and we need to fix it. It's a hard the dream to give up. Hello, caller. Trump? Hello. So what are we going to do about Jerry Rock getting kicked out? What do you do? Jerry Rock got to the meeting last night. I haven't seen the meeting. Why was he at the meeting? Why was he kicked out of the meeting for him? What do you do? You know what? It happened so fast I didn't get it. Did you? Uh, actually, Jerry came up to me and spoke to me afterwards and asked me some questions about my observations. What happened was there was a bureaucratic choice that David Gant had said about certain kinds of behaviors in the public speak that he would not tolerate. Well, Jerry triggered one of those what I call bureaucratic lines. Uh, he made the choice that don't go there, and he did, according to Chairman Gant. Uh, so he had him removed. Uh, I, my personal opinion that there was stress for everybody there uh, it was a very gray kind of call when you talk about such a bureaucratic decision. The point is that it was a human effect, somebody being thrown out who has obviously put his heart into being there. Communication is what's needed to hear from David Gant to talk to Jerry and, and help us all move forward and start talking to each other. Uh, forgive me for going that far, but that's, no, that's my observation. No, that's fine. Um, what, what line did he cross? Well. It happened it so was, fast. It was a judgment call by David. What and, did he think Jerry did? Uh, well, let's put it this way. There were social insults moving around from many sources last night to each other because of the, um, the stress that was going on. I'll, I'll call it the Stanley thing. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll use that metaphor without being, they're not trying to be insulting to anybody. The point was that there was so much of that moving that David made his choice because of stress driven. He was in a position of being one, I've got to make this bureaucratic choice, yes or no, and, and he did it. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a human being. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know he was very stressed out there. Who wouldn't be? At the same time, the human effect is Jerry was removed. I talked to Jerry about it afterwards. Uh, I honestly think he's okay now with it because uh, he was very healthy in his conversation with me without being specific. And uh, I certainly look forward to seeing him there again, obviously. Yeah, I wonder why it is, uh, I wonder why it is that Chad Nez now has to talk about Stanley did. I wonder why it didn't put Chad out. I don't know. Uh, it was emotional. I mean, it just was, um, we were calling them thieves. Um, and they probably didn't like that. They didn't like that. Um, it hurts. <laughs> it, it, it was clear they're thieves, and uh, they were taking this money. They knew it wasn't right, and they continued to do it. And there was, I didn't hear anybody hurling an insult that wasn't true. Um, it, it didn't seem like anybody was hurling. They were speaking and saying, this is dishonest, and you did it. And David was guilty, sounding, and acting, as was the whole board. Carol Peterson, with her background of her property and all the shenanigans getting around doing the right thing with that, um, we weren't allowed to make personal attacks. So, it, it, and to me, stating the facts of uh, the perks that Carol Peterson's given herself over her own property, I don't think that's an attack. That's just reciting what happened. Uh, but David Gant saw it differently. Um, I don't know what he thought he was going to get for a reaction. 30% um, is an admission of guilt, is the way I see it, um, in trying to appease us, but 30% doesn't come close. Um, when you talk about phone charges, you, what does it unlimited minutes cost? Under a hundred. Um, what is um, 
using a computer cost a month? Fifteen ninety-five. You know, guilty as charged. Yeah. It's like have you seen the, the commercial that um, your TV did about you know, the same your TV thing? Did you hear it? Oh yes, yes, yes. One that is so uh, wrong. Make it fun, Jesus, like that. After being down from sins. So I hope that God's wrath comes down on your TV. You hope God's wrath comes down on your TV? Okay, I think it just got cut off. Okay, I don't understand why that man said that. Um, okay, let's just move on. Well, if I may say, there was an example of anger right there of how our society is really getting so freaking frustrated, excuse my description, because he felt that way. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right, but... Um, the TV station and free speech uh, had nothing to do with it. Right. Yet implied threats are starting to show signs in society all over the place. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else can we say? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I got something we can talk about on that meeting last night. What? Where we can actually look at how we start talking to our county commissioners and what direction we really want them to go in. Start talking to them, I mean. Getting this voice okay. going. Okay. How would you uh, suggest that what would be effective in a way to speak to them? Well, I find it interesting. One of the things I'm studying right now has to do with called uh, street teams of guerrilla marketing. It's how people get out and talk to each other by social networking, but it's socially interactive. Uh -huh. And uh, I find it very interesting. If you really want to find out what's going on around the city, the quickest way to find it is by knowing what's going on on the streets. True. Sure. Um, getting a voice going is basically the same kind of marketing to ourselves. Uh, the guerrilla marketing book. I think it's a fascinating little book, but it talks about how social networking actually moves and drives things in our society because of this, you know, our economy, our bureaucracy of making sure. money as capitalists. And without the use of social networking, there wouldn't be any any medium for protests to, to launch themselves in the Mediterranean Rim, especially in Egypt and what we saw in Iran back in 2009. Yes. With the, or was it 2009 with the, with the re-election of, uh, of um, uh, Ahmadinejad? Uh, the, the massive protests, they're all coordinated through social networking, and it's all through Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, and a, a whole variety of different things. Uh, social networking is leading to social revolution around the world. And regardless of the, the ills of social networking, uh, some people who let their children starve to death while they play Farmville or just use it for absolutely inane purposes, there's a lot of, there's a lot of merit to it. A whole lot of merit, and it's changing the world faster than the world has ever changed before. And it's, it's the, the sky is the limit with it. So, is there any direction to it, or is it just helter skelter? It needs to remain helter skelter, as far as I'm concerned. As soon as it's given a direction, then that gives a road to be blocked off in the future. Yeah, that's and a critical mass. Yeah. Exactly, and you only have to look at uh, individual governments' responses to social networking to realize how important they are. When you have entire nations being blocked from their access to these tools, yes. such yes, as what happened awful. in Egypt, such as what happened in Iran and Tunisia, it the government will cut off access said. to them. It, it, it shows how important these, these are and how they should be protected. And by protected, I mean left absolutely alone and being, being allowed to grow. And speak, as in free speech, as in URTV. Mm -hmm. You've seen through history the town crier principle. That's actually how we structured it yeah. historically. And, uh, the very people, first message board. Yeah, uh, that's good analogy, good analogy. The thing is, we have a... Uh, a revolutionary mindset going on uh, within society, within the human event. Uh, we've got this communication tool. It's so powerful that we can reinforce, uh, well, our choices as a society. I mean, it's there. It's just we don't work collectively and communitively to facilitate that in our maturity yet. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you, we're having a good example. The transition community for sustainability. Um, With Vogel. Wonderful. 
Uh, that's a whole door to go through another time. Indeed. Okay. Thank you. Hello, caller. Hi, Dixie. This is Wanda. Hi, I just, Wanda. I just wanted to give an opinion, and I don't have all the details of the meeting, and I missed the first part of your show, but I think the reason that the commissioners did not want Jerry Rice there is that they were going to cover mental health in Western Highlands, and there probably is no one in Buncombe County that knows more about the failure of mental health and the involvement and the amount of property that was owned by Blue Ridge Mental Health than Jerry Rice. And I don't think they wanted Jerry in there when they discussed the meeting part with Western Highlands. You That's are, just my opinion. You are so right. I agree with you 100. I had forgotten all about that. <coughs> yeah. Have a good evening. Thank Enjoy you, Wanda. Show. Let's have lunch. Okay, we'll do. Bye. Bye. That's a lovely lady. Uh, and she's right. She's right. Um, Jerry Rice has fought for mental health and disabilities forever and ever and ever. Well, as one man watching another, I applaud the guy for being what he and what he's done. Mm -hmm. Me too. Me too. Well, I just hope everybody rises up and says enough because our whole county government, I mean, if you look at the courthouse, then you look at the commissioners, okay, whatever we're missing is screwed up too. Well, if I could share one thought, my concern is that as we create this uh, revolutionary change in our culture through our communications, that we recognize that fear can drive us in some pretty impossible directions. Yes. And we've got so much fear and anger mm -hmm. going on that they can push us in impossible directions and they're called self-destruction. There's, uh, there's, there's a lot of passion amongst people and passion sometimes leads us down a dark path. Yeah, we have to be very careful. Hello, caller. Hello there. Hi. How are you doing tonight? Fine, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Good. I was just wondering what legal grounds that any commissioner has to kick anybody out of a public building at a public meeting, especially a taxpayer that pays for that property and pays their salaries. I just wonder what kind of legal... I, I don't know, and, and I agree with you 100%. It is an interesting question. Where are question. the laws? It, Where are the rules? It, it reminds me of a city, a city council meeting. When was this? Or maybe it was, yeah, it was city council meeting several years ago when uh, talk radio host Matt Matan was arrested and pulled out yes. of the meeting. Yes. But he was immediately let go, as far as if I recall correctly. They so, just wanted him out, and yes. then they didn't care about him. So I, I, I don't know if there's any legal authority. Do you have any insights to that? Yes, and going through the Institute of Government, which all elected officials have to do, uh, there is an education to the legal principle of public safety. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest authorities that are used in the law structure in our Constitution is the issue of public safety. When a commissioner feels there is public threat, Remember, we're in big homeland security issues now, so mm -hmm. the, oh, whole threat. There, mm -hmm. the whole framework there, the whole framework there is one that can be very strong in fear, hostility, and misdirection from what I'll call mistakes of bureaucratic management. Mm -hmm. That's another reason why we've got to have civic leadership in the voice and networking going to really bring our maturity up to speed. And I'm trying to be nice right at the moment in my words. But where are the rules written is, about what's appropriate and what's not? Is it just a, a fly by a seat of your pants kind of deal where you decide this person is going to be a public menace and uh, we need to, mm. we need to make a yes or no decision right now whether or not he or she should be allowed to, to remain with us? Well, it, there you get into p protocols and policies. Mm -hmm. In the medical field, are called protocols, and, and a lot of corporate structures too. But in politics, they're policies. But a major question here: the policy is not law. Yes, but the authority of the voice and position make it up applicable. Mm -hmm. So it's up to one individual. 
to decide if he likes what you're going to say and wants it to be said. Well, when you're in that position of authority, it gets to that point, doesn't it? Well, it did last night. Hmm. Wonder. Yes. What I happened if Mr. Rice would have to that police officer and said, hey, being here, I stalled those people up. They're thieves. Well, okay, Deputy Rice was there. Um, he's a young, know-it-all hothead. And the other one had a look on his face like he was in charge of the atomic bomb. I mean, he just stalked over there with this look on his face. I, I couldn't believe it. was funny. It was very funny. Uh, I know he was young and trying to do his job, but it was, in this context, I'm going to just say it like it was, it was very funny. Um, the, it was so out of hand last night. David Gant looked the worst. He, his conduct, he held his temper and he didn't jump up out of his seat, but his conduct was horrible because they were caught dead to rights. They were listening to the people who put them there and a little humility would have helped. Bill Stanley is a jerk. Uh, he pulled out the um, politics card. Well, if there was a Republican on here, well, you know what? I don't go by the parties anymore. I gave up. Um, I go by the issue and I go by honesty. And to tell you the truth, I'll vote for an honest man that makes a mistake much more than I will that somebody who mouths and agrees and, and says what we want to hear. Give me honesty. Show me your background. I'm, I'm done with the politics. The, the, the right and the left, um, it doesn't make any sense because they all, you know, these people who are, uh, who, who go vote straight ticket. Do you know what you did? Do you have any clue that you might have voted in somebody horrible? Uh, horrible for the job, I don't mean as a person. Or as a person. Right. In some cases. In some cases, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Bye. I'd like to interject that as an elected official, and I did three terms of office, and I guarantee you, you become a product of that environment. Mm -hmm. And to make your way through the, that environment and feel functional, at the end of it, whether you choose that's two-year term or 14-year term or whatever term, the point is, is you know that at some point you are a product of that environment to the point you're a puppet of that environment. Okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And your only safety and security in trying to navigate your way there is existing in that bureaucracy. Yeah, which is counterproductive. That is one of the flaws of our due process we have. We do not have enough communications going from leadership to management about what directions we're going so our progress is both stable and effective. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we can't get lost in the, the greed of money anymore because humanity is too big for that to keep us stable. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just not there. And if we stay imbalanced with elite versus social norms versus what's abnormal, whatever the de definition is in society at the time, um, it's got to be reframed, uh, what I call back to that madness. And our leaders are everywhere who have a voice who are willing to be there and help. And it's just like this transition community thing. There's over 5,000 communities across the United States that are looking at that, I, I think that uh, the transition handbook, Rob Hopkins from England, about how we develop a sustainable resiliency because peak oil is past. And we've got to reframe sociologically to be sustainable from local resiliency. It's got to be suitable. It's got to be sustainable. And it's got to be supportable by our community or else it's just more madness. That's right. There's a whole other component to it, too. Just a minute, caller, one second. Um, 
it, it, th with people rising up and peacefully saying, enough, we've had enough, we've had enough. We need our elected officials to listen and act and make something better out of it. Even if they, I mean, if they have to say, we're sorry, it was poor judgment, we were idiots, whatever they have to say, they need to come halfway because we've already found them guilty in, in public, our opinions, there's a word. Um, hello, caller, thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi, yeah, has anybody uh, mentioned anything about how much the executive director from BCTV2 makes? No, but they are advertising, is that what's going on? They're advertising, I mean, we're getting screwed. Um, well, I heard it's somewhere around the high 70, 70 thousand. Wow. And uh, we all know, including where you are, that uh, that's ridiculous. Yes. How much equipment that would, that would that buy us, you know? A lot. Well, I got to say the economy of supporting the elite is ridiculous. Uh, when you look at the bureaucratic management structure that is so top heavy, from the salaries and monies, both corporations and government officials, that it's on the taxpayer's back, and they've broken it. And they keep wanting to say, well, we'll take away from this service and that service. I'm sorry, the back's already broken. Services aren't functioning anymore in a society effectiveness. That's uh, right. Hmm. Oh, shut okay, up. thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I think we all have a passion right now on trying to get this awareness underway. Yeah, I, you know, it's not a matter of I want anybody in jail. It's a matter of I want the money given back um, that we talked about last night. Um, they can, instead of giving it back, not take anything for the rest of the term, you know. Um, and I want them to show us that they can do what we, what they're supposed to be doing, and what we ask them to do. And and they can come. And then you know, how long are you going to remember their guilt? You know, in this, uh -huh. I'm not going to remember. I'm going to be happy mm. they came around. Madness. I don't want to see too much madness. I want to see two sides working together because although they're thieves, um, I don't think that's what they intended. They just kind of slipped into it and it got easy. Do you think uh, we can get both sides to actually meet the need? That's what I call it. <laughs> the need for change, get both sides to meet the need? I would have to see the city, the county commissioners again after they had time to cool off, watch themselves on TV, and decide if that's what they want to look like. Is is that how they want to communicate? Yeah, I hear all of those words fit. <laughs> and we've got some major transformation to get done, as well as transition to get done to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. If we cannot empower the people for that event, we will not succeed. That's right. Hello, caller. Hi, Dixie. Hi, how are you? Doing good. To get back to the point of removing people from a public meeting. Yes. Because it's a matter of security. Yes. The point needs to be made that jury rights, year in and year out, has been at every county commissioner's meeting for many years going back and he has religiously videotaped things that they have said in their meetings and at their retreats. To perceive him to be a threat was convenient. It was self-serving, wasn't it? Would he you, would have been cut out years ago. Could you recognize that there was a sense from David's position that there actually is a social threat and he may have just at that moment focused it on Jerry? And reacted. I mean, that's to be honest with you, I didn't see the county commissioners' meeting. I've been trying to watch it on Channel Two and have caught bits of it. 
I haven't seen the whole thing. Uh, that I do know because I worked with Jerry on special ed issues for a few years in the past, that he is very sincere, his heart and mind are in the right place. He doesn't speak if he doesn't know what he's talking about. I have great faith in him. Um, and I normally watch all of the city and county uh, council and, commi and commission meetings on public TV, and I can't wait to see all of what happened. I hope that at this point the community at large will get behind Jerry Wright uh, and realize that for years, when he would be the only person at public speaking talking in behalf of what's best for the citizens of the county, and keeping a complete and accurate record of it on tape for his own purposes. Just to be able to go back and prove if anyone ever doubted that he said or didn't say anything or that they didn't say anything. I mean, people have to understand that Jerry is one of the few real people in the county with a dedication and a purpose. And to dismiss him the way that they did is unconscionable. I have seen enough of David Gant and his public life in the last probably 10 years that I've seen enough. You know, I've, I've seen enough, but I, I urge the community at large, the county at large, to get behind Jerry Rice and the people who have years behind the scenes been working diligently to provide a better government for the people in this part of the state. You know, I've been <clears throat> trying to think instead of starting a group, we have, we've got so many groups like Mike Fryer said, that's a good place for me personally to go and, and get behind. Um, I will do that and thank you for that suggestion because he needs we should that support. all be going to every county commissioner's meeting, and if we have nothing to say, at least stand there and nod our heads in affirmation to what other people are saying. Exactly. Well, the county commissioner's uh, meeting room is one of controlled size. You, oh, that, yeah. We were at a maximum, and I'd say maybe 80 people were in there, but that the, the point about bureaucratic management you can only, you can control 80 people, but if you had 150, probably not. So for safety so, reasons, they would probably cut it off at a certain amount of people. And you see how bureaucratic decisions start manipulating how society works. Well, they're going to have to Wouldn't it be move. nice to see instead of money for all this other real estate, they had to put money into a larger commission meeting, heat hearing room? Right. Right. Exactly. Maybe that's what they ought to transform that new construction. And we pipe. don't have to build it. We can find something already built for well, less than $18 million. There are significant, significant meeting spaces in, in Asheville that will hold anywhere from 80 to 400 <clears throat> people. Let's well, put them in the Civic Center. I'll be naughty. Uh, how about this, the new uh, tourist facility with bathrooms being transformed into the new County Commission. Half a million dollars. I'm um, sorry, I, that was poor humor, but yes, it, it's called balance of economy. And we've got to start reframing it. So that to and me was the good. And when the commissioners get too hot, we run through the little mini show. Oh. <laughs> You're so funny. That was good. <clears throat> now we have all the cement and all these slabs and everything around there. In the summertime, we can hold them mm. on the cement slab. Mm. Only if the water system's working to cool you off. I see. Then um, we can dance through the... Yeah, splashing <laughs> waters, we all shall play. Right. I'm Dixie, sorry. I appreciate everything you do. Oh, thank you. I appreciate your calls. Okay, hon. Bye-bye. Bye. She's wonderful. I talked to her at home, and I've never met her. I got four minutes left. Can so, you put a plug in? Go ahead, put a plug in. Uh, Miss Lisa Landis and I are looking to co-produce a new TV show series here at URTV called the Sustainable Resolution, Cannabis and Hemp. Uh -huh. um, 
the sustainable resolution is the intent of trying to honor, well, efforts like what you're doing. Let's find ways of uh, moving the resolution process, and that means the legal process with local government, to be sustainable. And uh, I have a long history here in civic leadership in regards to a community supported agriculture and linking lands committee. And the point is, is that we're trying to look at it from the top down. And it's time for community planning to come from the bottom up to start changing this survival approach into thriving by our own freedom of production, both energy, sustainable uh, agriculture. Like yeah. Hey, hello. Hello. We, we've got two minutes. Okay, yeah, I just was going to mention, uh, uh, you know, if anybody has the opportunity sometimes to observe the difference between how Asheville City Council conducts its meetings and the, and the commissioners, and it's, it's an entirely different experience. And one of the things that I, I actually called, and John Boyle was on with uh, Matt Natan today, but uh, Holly Jones, who was very helpful with us with the CTS project, uh, while she was on city council, was going to help us when she uh, got elected to the commissioners. And the point thing I pointed out is that since she's been on council, she has assumed the same demeanor and non-responsiveness. And uh, and uh, so there's there's it's interesting. There is a real uh, conformity of thought process and everything. And, it, and it's not very debate oriented and uh, listening oriented. And I just, you know, I want to point that out. There is a definite culture on, on the on the uh, county commission that I hope will change. And I hope that uh, Holly hears me, and, and she gets encouraged to, to speak out again as she used to, and to voice her opinion and not not fall under this iron-fisted control that they have. And it really is I, that way. I hope so too. I have hope for her. So thank you. Thank you. I wanted to ask you. You mentioned a certain kind of gardening that produced. A lot more crop. <clears throat> yeah, hydro hydroponic gardening. Hydroponic. Uh, sustainability is a big thing with, my, with me as well. But uh, yeah, hydroponic gardening is something that I greatly believe in, especially in a place where we don't have the absolute greatest growing climate. We don't have the longest seasons here. Would you be so. willing to somehow teach a little class? <clears throat> I don't think that I am at all ready to teach a class. It's okay. just a, a, I'm a hobbyist. Okay. And I'm in the process of getting ready to, to build my first hydroponic tomato and pepper garden. But I've not even started that yet. I'm just, uh, I'm just a fan of the idea behind it and the plan. Okay. But it's something that I greatly believe in and I think is absolutely necessary because as the world has grown larger and larger and larger and more interconnected over the past, uh, past millennia, what, We've grown smaller as well and uh, way more dependable on everybody. And That's as right. soon as one link in the chain is broken, then that leads to catastrophe everywhere else. That's so right. I think it's absolutely vital, vital, vital for every community to be as self-sustaining as possible. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. It's been a fun show. I hope it's um, given some people some ideas. Uh, tomorrow morning I will find out how to support Jerry Rice and join the bandwagon. It's important. Um, I have built above ground like lasagna gardens where I add certain kinds of soil mixtures and then mm -hmm. had a border around it and I put newspaper on the bottom and um, that's been good but I haven't gotten the crap I want. Yeah. What, what's the difference in yours? successful.